Napoli fans around the world, welcome to Napoli Talk. Yes, I'm not sitting down at my usual spot, which is actually usually right over there where the monitor is. That's because right now I'm cooking. I'm in a bit of a rush, but I wanted to get a video across to you guys. Anyways, what am I cooking, guys? I am going to make some pasta with some cherry tomatoes and some fettuccine i think it is that i have i haven't got much i uh didn't go to the grocery store and buy other types of pasta like spaghetti which i think would have worked better anyways as i said i wanted to make a video for you guys and i want to touch on some different topics there's no particular topic not one specific topic in this video i want to just talk about different things so number one is now i should probably just start cooking while I talk. Number one is actually uh, Cavani and Albiol yesterday in the Europa League semi-finals both scored. Now Cavani scored two goals uh, for Manchester United. That's 11 goals right now for him this season and you know to see that this guy is still performing at that level and scoring goals against Roma is great and Albiol as well starting for Villarreal, a team that's in the semi-final of a Europa League game and is on the way towards a final. It'd be extremely, extremely nice to see them both progress through. But you have to, you have to ask yourself the question of what does it say about Italian football if a team like Roma, which, you know, is not the best team in Italy, but still considered a pretty good team. What does that tell you about Italian football if they lose 6-2? Now, Roma, you know, the coach Fonseca got, got linked with Napoli quite a few times this season. And, um, you know, there was at times where Roma was playing well. They were third in the table. But I'm very glad that those rumors have been dying recently about Fonseca coming to Napoli because he's proven that actually he's not that good of a coach. Six goals against him when he played against Man United, four goals when he played against us. We, we beat Roma quite comprehensively, I think by uh, six goals in total, uh, home and away. Um, and, and just in general, he hasn't been performing well against the big teams. So he's not a coach that I think will bring Napoli to that next level. Uh, I also didn't like his approach in the Roma game. He, he was winning 2-1 at halftime. And, you know, you've got three players that are injured at that point already. You're, you're basically out of substitutions. You're winning 2-1 away from home, Europa League semi-final. What do you do? You start playing attacking football in the second half? I mean, the goals that Roma conceded were on the counter. That, for me, shows such an inexperience from the coach. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. When you are in that position over there, you have to make sure that you take a result home. So you... You have those two away goals, 45 minutes left to play. Just close yourself completely. Close yourself completely. You might concede one or two goals. The game's still gonna end just 2-2 or 3-2. And you can take that result back to Rome. But no, what does he decide to do? He decides to play attacking football, expose his team to the likes of Rashford, Pogba, Cavani, Bruno Fernandes in the second half. Obviously, they can bring in fresh players. Roma can't because they're out of substitutions already. And it was just a, a horrible, horrible result for Roma. But this brings me to the point of coaches. And there's been a lot of talks about, obviously, Gattuso and uh, Spalletti for Napoli. As I said, Fonseca is now not uh, being mentioned anymore. There's been a lot of talks about that. And... Listen, Spalletti is a good coach. He's got experience. He, Politano played with him actually, if we consider the current group of players that we have. I don't mind Spalletti. I don't have a problem with Spalletti necessarily because I know 
I just know that with Spalletti, this team can reach the top four. Now, where's the where's the issue? It's that you have to consider, well, what, what do we have actually at our disposal? What's, what's the other option? Well, the other option is to confirm Gattuso. And between confirming Gattuso and taking on Spalletti, I will 100% always think if I was De Laurentiis, I'd do everything I can to confirm Gattuso. Now, why is that? Because Gattuso also proved that he can work with this team quite well. We are in the top four as I make this video. There was a time that we weren't doing so well, but that was predominantly due to injuries and COVID. Now, so in terms of performance on the field, I think they're quite similar with Gattuso actually playing a bit more attacking football, it's a bit nicer to see. What's also important is player relations. One thing that Gattuso does really well is that he's got the whole team working for him. Everybody loves him. There's been reports in the news saying how the team is going to talk to De Laurentiis, try to convince him to keep Gattuso on board. Now, I don't know if that's true. I don't know. I mean, probably De Laurentiis knows already that the team really likes uh, Gattuso. But, you know, you can't underestimate the importance of having good player relations. And why do I mention this? Because Spalletti, in his time at Inter and in his time for Roma, that's been his weakness, his downfall. He alienated a player like Totti at Roma. I don't want to see that same thing happening with someone like Insigne. He alienated Icardi when he was at Inter. So he has a hard time dealing with big personalities, the big players in the team. And I think if Napoli is looking to make that next step in attracting the next big talents and wanting to keep very important players in the squad, then I think that actually Spalletti is maybe not the best option for us because I don't know how he will handle that situation. Having said that, he does have experience. I'm sure he knows what's right and wrong. And um, yeah, we'll see. Uh, this is more just me sort of giving out my different opinions, but I'd love to know in the comments what you think about this. Now, moving on to the players, as I said, this video doesn't really have a topic. It's just me chatting about what I've heard during the week while I make some food. Um, so talking about the players, there's been rumors that Petania is on his way out. Obviously, he's not been very used of late when Mertens and Osimhen are firing on all cylinders. And he's the few chances that he did have this year, he didn't really take the most of it. So Pitania might be on his way out next season and apparently Napoli is thinking of replacing him with Caio Jorge or George Jorge. I'm pretty sure it's Jorge. Caio Jorge, Brazilian player, 19 years old, plays for Santos. He impressed. So why, why are people talking about him? He impressed quite a lot uh, when playing in the Copa Libertadores. So the equivalent of the Champions League in South America. Having said that, his so that so he's only scored nine goals, but because he played so well in the international competition, he attracted a lot of attention. But as I said, having said that, 19 years old, plays for Santos, lots of international attention around him, he's not gonna come in cheap. Is this the type of player that Napoli need in attack? I don't think so, is my personal opinion. I'm not saying he's not a good he's not a good player. I don't want you guys in 10 years time saying, oh, you said he's not a good player and look at him, five ballon doors. No, I'm saying right now we have a young player in Victor Osimhen. He's a player that needs to grow. He's a player that needs time on the field, experience, and he needs to learn from Mertens. Mertens himself is a very important player for Napoli that also needs to play as often as possible and is definitely not done yet. So where does a third 
player of the stature of Kayo fit in because you're gonna have to spend 30 40 million on this guy and if already Osiman is you know struggling to play every game then how's it gonna look like when you've got Merten starting and 70 million Osiman on the bench and 40 million Kayo also on the bench I just don't see that happening um, so you know if Osiman maybe was a bit more established then you could say, okay, he's the starter. You've got 70 million euros starting. Merten's on the bench because he's getting older. And then you've got a promising player um, on the bench, which is like a Aussie man 2.0. But because I still think that Mertens is, is, you know, at least 50% the starter for Napoli, I just can't see a situation where we have two three games in a row met and starting and these two guys both on the bench it's it's a bit too much uh, so that's my take on that and with other things uh, with the current players that we do have it's been a lot of talks about Insigne's renewal I think it will depend a lot on the Champions League I do think that he wants to stay I think Napoli want him to stay but what I think will depend on the Champions League is his salary. So I think he's demanding 4.5 million. He's currently on four. He's demanding 4.5. Napoli want to reduce down to three, but I'm sure that if we get Champions League football, De Laurentiis will put in the effort. Um, with players instead like Fabian and Koulibaly, we have to see. I am almost certain that at least one of them will get sold and my money is on Fabian just because he's got the Euros where he can show his potential and if he shines in the Euros trust me Barcelona Real Madrid these big teams especially from Spain Atletico Madrid they will want a piece of that they will want to get Fabian and I think at that point, if he has a good euro, his value will be around the 60 million euro mark. And at that point, I think De Laurentiis should sell Fabian for that kind of money, even though he's been playing extremely well. As for Koulibaly, I wouldn't want to see him go because I think he's quite irreplaceable for Napoli. And... I think we've got so many things going on in defense that we have to sort out. Our left backs, uh, a backup for right back. Who our goalkeeper is going to be? That I think if we sell Koulibaly, which is the only guy that is actually playing out of this world. Okay, you've got Di Lorenzo playing great. But Koulibaly in terms of the center the center backs he's the only guy that is always consistently performing if you take him out of the picture and we're left with Manolas and Rahmani I'm not so confident we'll be a competitive team next year or as you know competitive as we would hope so anyways guys that is my take on all of this uh my food's not ready yet so I can't really show you guys in fact I haven't been cooking much because I've been speaking but make sure you are smashing that like button and subscribing to Napoli Talk. One like equals one cent to the Cannavaro Ferrara Foundation. And post-edit, I will show you guys what this food looks like. Or maybe I might post it on Instagram. So make sure you guys follow my Instagram link in the description. And as always, Forza Napoli sempre.